But why does it have to be blacky? I know, right? Our favorite one. What's up, modern setters? It's a cold, rainy, nasty day, and I was out just doing the chores, and I just found something I'm not very happy about. One of our Icelandic chicks. Looks like she's been beaten up. And I'm gonna say it was by the broody hen. And I don't know why, but if you look, she's not doing very good, guys. Hope she makes it, guys. She's a beautiful chicken. We don't have very many Icelandic chicks here, so we're gonna bring her in and get her back to health. Now we need to get that poor Icelandic chick a nice little setup in the basement here for her. The water we're gonna give her right here, we put apple cider vinegar in, we put some garlic in here, and we put some elderberry syrup with raw honey. So this should really help give her a little kick in the pants and get her feeling better. We don't medicate any of our animals here, so that water is her medication. Then we'll be giving her some more organic feed. You're still doing good, honey. You're our favorite chick. You better survive this. Come on, we got a nice little home set up for you. There we go, give her a nice little home. I told Gina this morning what happened to this little chick. This is our favorite Icelandic chick, so neither of us are happy. We haven't told Olivia yet, so when Olivia gets home from school, I'll have to let her know and we'll keep an eye on her. She's in good spirits, she's just been, that broody hen just beat her up. That's the only thing I can think of, because none of the other chicks have been hurt. They're all fine, and I know that broody hen can be miserable. She actually, I wish I had the camera the other day, when I was moving the chicks, I was nowhere near her. I was about 10, 15 feet away. She jumped over at me and latched right onto my arm. She's crazy, I tell you. So she's beat up pretty good, unfortunately. But she's a beautiful chick. We gotta get this lady back to health. If any of you guys have any good recommendations to help us nurse this Icelandic chick back into good health, See, even Pluto wants her to get better. Right, Pluto? We've already lost a meat bird this week. We don't need to be losing another chicken, especially not this one. Oh! This weather is terrible. I shouldn't be complaining about the rain. It's good for us. But we've had a whole bunch of it this season already. And it's not good for making videos, I'll tell you that. And you guys probably don't like it either. But last night, I was able to get the chickens and the ducks into New York City. This is the first night we were able to get the ducks into New York City to sleep. So it's going to be raining, like I said. So we're going to keep the chickens and the ducks locked up in New York City so that they'll learn this is home. They're probably not going to be happy, but let's go feed them and see how they're doing. You ladies and Mr. Rooster want to get out? I'm sorry, you got to stay in. got the best place in the house. Good morning, Spots. How's Mrs. Pigs doing, huh? You sitting by Mrs. Pigs' butt? You? Yep. You guys are so silly. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Oh, you're nice and warm. Yes, good morning. Olivia already fed you? I bet she did. Good morning, Mrs. Pigs. Hey guys, she's already doing so much better. She's up moving around, eating and drinking, and she just pooped. <laughs> You gotta clean it up, but that's a good sign. We're gonna mix up some compost for some soil blocks. Maybe next year we can try Vermont compost where the roses went. This year we got Green Mountain compost. From the same state, 
but not the same place. We just use the seed starting mix. It's regular compost. It's just the fine castings for our soil blocks and this stuff works amazing. All you need to do is add some water in with it. And you're gonna have some awesome soil blocks for starting your seeds in. Guys, I'm telling you, this isn't no high tech thing. This is super simple. You just gotta have a few things. You just need a two inch soil block, some compost or some seed starting mix. I mean, this could be your own compost that you just ran over a screen and collected all the fines for. You don't need any fancy special containers. We had these lying around, that's why we're using them. I'd love to make some wooden ones instead of having my soil blocks in plastic, but we haven't had the time yet and we have the plastic ones, so we're gonna use what we have. These things are so simple, there's no reason why you shouldn't be using soil blocks. You saw how big my tomato plants are. This is how I started those. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it right here. It was when Justin Rhodes was over. We were out putting them in the greenhouse. Go check it out. Today we're gonna be starting zucchini, summer squash, cucumbers, and spaghetti squash. Normally these things we'd start from seed in the soil in the garden. But this year it's been so rainy and cold, our soil temps haven't warmed up yet. This coming weekend, Memorial Day, is our last frost day. But the soil temp is so cold, I don't think it's gonna help, and it's gonna be raining for the next week or two. So we're gonna plant them inside in soil blocks, and then we'll transplant them. We're gonna start with our spaghetti squash seeds. What really drove us to going hardcore this year on a lot of this stuff is, we bought this spaghetti squash at the grocery store for one squash, Organic squash, it was $10! That's crazy! I mean, and who knows where it came from? And who knows how organic it really was? At least when we're growing it at our house, we know it's really beyond organic. We didn't even use a bag of this organic compost to start these seeds. And one bag cost $7.75. And we're getting, we have four trays going with 36 blocks in them. That's a lot of plants. And how many fruits is each plant gonna produce? For under eight bucks for the soil. I kinda went overboard. We don't need this many of each plant, but the seeds we're using here are from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds, and they're probably three or four years old. So the germination rate might not be as good as if they're new, but we got a whole bunch. We already paid for them, so why not use them? I think we'll have just as good a luck as we normally would. They're heirloom seeds, they've been stored in a cool, dry place, so let's experiment with it. Speaking of experiments, if more of these germinate than what we need for our garden beds, I have a bunch of uh, hay bales that were in our winter chicken coop that got soiled with chicken manure and have been outside in the rain. I bet you we could plant these you know, leftover zucchini, summer squash, cucumbers in there. And I bet you they would take off. So if we have a bunch of leftovers, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna experiment with hay bale planting. Not straw bale, but hay bale. Now that we get everything planted in the soil blocks, we're gonna go put them on our heat mat. The reason we use a heat mat is, is you're gonna see these seeds germinate in a day or two. It is crazy. That has like the biggest effect on seeds germinating is soil temp. If you don't have a seed mat, don't worry about it. Put it on top of your refrigerator. The little residual heat from your refrigerator will wake those seeds up like that. We're gonna cover them and kind of give them the greenhouse effect. It'll give them, it'll help keep the moisture in so we won't have to water them as much. We'll have to keep you guys updated on how fast these things germinate. Oh man. All right, these are the cucumbers. Whew, I almost didn't remember which one was which. And these are the summer squash. Then we got zucchini, and then our spaghetti squash. So I got some bad news. You do? One of the Icelandic chicks got hurt. <gasps> which one? You gotta come see. Is it Blackie? It is. Oh. I think the broody hen beat her up.
We're gonna have to keep her inside and keep an eye on her. Okay. I found her like that this morning. Yucky. Yeah, but she's doing a lot better now. Really? Yeah. She wasn't moving before, she was just sleeping. Now at least she's getting up, eating and drinking. And not just sleeping. So we're gonna keep an eye on her. That's sad. It is sad, isn't it? But it's so yucky. It is. I don't know why the broody hen would have done that, but... But why does it have to be blacky? I know, right? Our favorite one had to get picked on.